Hi, my name is Elliot. I'm a sales engineer at Domino Data Lab, and today I'm going to walk through the integrated model monitoring capability in Domino 5.0. We're going to start off on our model API page where we can see all of our hosted containerized model endpoints. You can see that for a few of these, we have data drift and model quality monitoring set up to ensure that any of our models that are in production are staying healthy. To jump into my XGBoost model, I can see where it's hosted, all the different uh, versions that are currently running, and I can send it a sample scoring request. Basically, any time a scoring request is sent to this model API endpoint, it will collect those records and then compare them against the training data this model was originally trained on. So you can see I can uh, pick between all my different model versions here and understand the training data distributions as well as the distributions of prediction data that has come in on a daily or weekly basis. So here, our training data has a very even bell-shaped curve, but our prediction data is very sporadic and even contains some untrained classes. This gives a data scientist or ML engineer a very good idea that their model might decay in quality as a result of this data drift. You can, of course, set up model quality uh, checks and alerting so that you can basically uh, set an acceptable range for your model to behave in. Um, and then based on, uh, you know, the, the data that comes in, you can see how well is your model actually performing. And let's say your model fails a model quality check. Well, it's very easy to spin up the exact environment where you originally trained that model. So if I wanted to say um, re retrain model version one, I can open up this um, environment that this model was first trained in. This gives me the exact version of the files that were used, the exact environment with all my Python or R package versions. And I can go ahead and open that up. That basically grants me with a um, environment, in this case, Jupyter Lab, where I can very easily retrain my model to adjust for you know, those uh, um, model quality issues. Jumping back to my model monitor dashboard, this is where I can see my full model registry of all models that have been um, set up for monitoring. I can click into them here to understand the, the data traffic over time. I can see the model schema here to see what are we trying to predict, what features are being used, the row identifier, timestamp, et cetera. If I look at data drift, I can see um, the checks. In this case, I run nightly checks at midnight to understand how have my features drifted over time. And to understand at kind of a higher level, we have an analyze page where I can set a specific date range and see the trend over time. Is my drift a one-off? Is there a pattern, maybe some seasonality at play here? You can always try out different model metrics, or sorry, um, data drift um, performance tests to understand, you know, how does your uh, given feature perform on a given statistical test? And we also see model quality checks over time, as well as the trend analysis here. And finally, we can see our cohort analysis. Basically, a cohort analysis is a generated report where data is clustered into like groups, and we understand which are the high performing groups and which are the low performing groups to give you a better idea of how you can remediate a model that is performing poorly. So here we have a variety of different cohorts, some performing very well on uh, mean squared error and some performing quite poorly. So if I look at this table, I can see that some of these cohorts have a mean squared error of above 250 and some have um, a much lower one below 60. I can then see defining characteristics of any of these cohorts. So for this one, um, we're looking to predict uh, automobile miles per gallon. You can see here that for very heavy uh, vehicles with medium horsepower and high displacement coming from USA, which is the 1.0 origin, uh, our model is performing very poorly. So that might mean we might need to collect some more data um, around those types of models or um, perhaps do some hyperparameter tuning. I think ultimately the takeaway is that Domino now allows you to 
uh, automate the full model monitoring process, identify uh, areas where models can be improved, and then actually be able to recreate that training environment to easily retrain those models and get them back into production.